Hey, what's up, guys? Your boy Joaquin Alexander, and this is part three and the conclusion of my interview with the amazing Govinda Das. And right now, we're going to be talking about what this man is up to, what's to come, what he's involved in. I'm just kind of like, kind of excited because I actually like this sort of thing. I'm all about, I'm a tree hugger. I'm a Republican, but I'm a tree hugger. It's kind of like oxymoron there. But um, so, uh, what do you what do you got going on when it comes to the environment to save the save the bees bees save are dying it. worldwide but fun uh, interesting fact about the bees uh, bees are invasive and they mm. actually destroy native pollinators which actually can hurt the environment overall huh that's yeah okay. that's but so I should give a little background so in college in sociology one of my major focuses was social ecology mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's the idea that we are we're all living in one ecosystem which i think is like pretty much unproved like it you 100 percent true you really like you live in an environment right like mm -hmm. people like even just like in the city right people like oh i hate rats i hate like always like like, you know, like, you know that the reason the rats are there is because you're throwing all your shit outside, mm -hmm. right? Like, so you, your waste doesn't just go away. Something needs to eat it. So even in the city, there is this ecosystem that exists. That's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, like, uh, it's like its own organism. Yeah, and it's all connected. And, like, what I, what I like to tell, like, when I give speeches at the church or whatever, I like to relate to the environment because at the end of the day, like, there is a... My, like mycelium, which is the network that produces mushrooms, there is a mycelium network over every single part of this world, okay. right, which breaks down organisms, which we found out with these mycelium networks that can even communicate to trees. Yeah. So They're all interlinked. Yeah, and we as people are connected to that. Yeah. We live in an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. That can be good. That's very good. And it's like historic, like one of the Native American, one of the things the Native Americans did, like in the Amazon, now that it's very sad, they're burning it down. But we're also discovering that there are entire civilizations. Oh yeah, that lidar. Are in the lidar Amazon. is being they're penetrating the dense under foliage, and uh, man, um, it's crazy. Like a little side note, uh, there was a tortoise that got burned by the um, fires in the Amazon, or big. I think it was a tortoise. They three D printed him a uh, shell, so. It was the Avengers for the animals, a group in, in South America. That's pretty cool. Um, so what is this uh, non-profit that you're trying to do? What are, what are you trying to form or what do you what do you Yeah, think yeah. So it all relates back to the problem like, that people aren't separate from nature. We're part of nature. And mm -hmm. like what I was bringing up with the Amazon is the people who lived in the Amazon made the Amazon the way it was. Yeah, they knew how to conserve the land. No, you just conserve the land, like planted fruit trees, plant, like the biodiversity in the Amazon is man-made. Like literally the, the indigenous people that live there now, they raise turtles, put the turtles, the eggs in the sea, and when the monsoons raise, they have all these turtles they get to eat. And they also replenish the turtle population. Mm -hmm. So conservation and its stewardship based on, permacul based on permaculture, based on improving the land, making it not only functional for the animals, but also the people living on it. True. So my I have my I have several friends like uh, my friend Emily and Alyssa. We're working on this project. We're trying to create a nonprofit, where we're literally going to go out and try to improve the land and preserve the land and get rid of invasive species. Uh, put bees on certain areas. Uh, get make sure pollinators are there making sure the bat populations are like make sure the whole yeah. ecosystem is running as it should education knowledge yeah. education volunteer and help hopefully we, we if we can get this set up we can do contract work. so pe if people need a little extra money like hey if you've done landscaping before well you can come over here and you can help out and we can we can set you up with something we can feed you we can do all these things you can make a little bit extra money and you can go back and you can help people right yeah and then so the ultimate goal uh, we haven't thought of a name yet. Well, I'm pretty good. But, but you're in the inf in infancy stage. But the fact is that you want to actually make like an actual difference. Because I'm I'm all for you know. I mean, let me know what I can help you with. You know, if you want to come back on and and speak more on this. You know what I mean? Because I mean, I'd love to have you again. Um, I I think to people in the YouTube verse and just people in general, um, y'all really gotta understand. If y'all don't get so caught up from Instagram, Facebook. 
And you actually take the time, go outside, be barefoot, walk on the grass, go and smell the, the actual, just be one with nature in a sense. I saw I love camping, I love the wilderness. But a lot of people that I, I, I know, that could be the furthest thing that's away from their mind. They're like, man, I gotta go to the club, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. I'm like, well, if things get so bad, whether you believe in climate change or not, you know, um, I mean, you just gotta do your own due diligence. You see that we're sitting here talking about it, and I want to bring awareness to this. So, I, and I think one of the things really important because it goes back to there's an economic reason for it. Yeah. So, whether or not you believe in man-made climate change, the temp, the average temperature of the Earth is rising, and there's nothing you can do. We can literally know there's CO two in the atmosphere that's going, and going, and going, and going. So, whether you believe it or not, the climate is warming, and the climate is changing. And some people say, oh, well, that's something that always happened. Well, let's pretend you're right, which you're not. But if you were, then you still need to adapt to the environment around you. And you still need to preserve the environment around you. Like one of the problems in Houston having, it was all, Houston was all wetland, yeah. right? And then so now there's all these retaining ponds everywhere. And so now there's more and more, not there's more hurricanes, but there's more that there's more rain and there's more water coming to these hurricanes and these hurricanes are lasting longer you know are bigger there's all these huge huge floods and one of the reasons these floods are happening is because we didn't build the city around nature we kind of like we're, we're like just kind of throw them out yeah, yeah. it's like man, who needs the bayous let's just have some retention ponds no you gotta have the actual uh, wetlands they 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 uh, went in and i don't know if it was alabama or georgia down at the bottom in the gulf They've actually been like building more and more wetlands, and and and, and I'm like, like that's what we need to do. You know, we can have, live a harmonious life with bugs, with mammals, with everyone else. But um, anyways, man, I gotta. I think our, our time's up. But I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna have you uh, back on again. And it was a pleasure meeting you, bro. It's nice meeting you too. So nice this concludes my interview with Mr. Govinda Das, boy. Joaquin Alexander on the older hour and uh, I'll holler to you later.